Welp, here we are. Another week of college football has wrapped up. Um, there's still a game going on technically right now, but it's BYU beating up on Troy. And they're the number 18 team in the country right now, so, you know, they'll be moving on up in the rankings. Um, but this week um, really showed us something once again. It showed us a lot of the same old, same old, and it gave us some great insight into some teams already starting their seasons. The SEC started this week, and I got to tell you, not really that bad of a job. I mean, everything went smoothly for the SEC. You know, things went well as far as, you know, games and stuff going on and you know, player safety and fan safety and stuff like that. Everything went nicely. So, what about those SEC games? Well, let's talk about the early ones first. And the first off, we got the number five Florida Gators taking on Lane Kiffin. Yes, I know. I forgot about Lane Kiffin even becoming the head coach of Ole Miss. But, you know, Kyle Trask just did whatever he wanted to that Ole Miss defense. Sure, it was a shootout, but I mean, Florida wins by 16 in this game, and Kyle Trask threw at least four touchdowns. He had four touchdowns in the first half, and he was just balling out there, man. What a great performance. Um, the game I was originally going to watch that afternoon was UCF East Carolina, uh, because, you know, Notre Dame Wake Forest had moved along with several other games. At least three others from um, group of five conferences that have moved, you know, games around or postponed them or canceled them around. But I wasn't completely surprised. UCF just boat raced East Carolina, and it wasn't even close. Auburn, Kentucky. Now, this was the game that I did watch early on in the afternoon. Um, one of two games. The other one we'll talk about in a moment. But Auburn and Kentucky were tied for a long, or rather, Auburn had an 8-7 lead for a long while, you know. But then Bo Nix, Gus Malzahn and company just pulled away in the second half. And you know that Auburn defense is stacked. That SEC money is stacked. So, therefore, defenses are stacked. You know, Kentucky just didn't have enough luster. Um, they trotted out their quarterback that they started back in 2018 back out onto the field and he did, I forgot his name but he didn't do you know too much at all um, defense of Auburn really shut Kentucky down how about those raging Cajuns am I right they're still undefeated this time beating Georgia Southern off a of field goal late and I don't know how these guys are still ranked. I don't know how these guys are still getting big W's, but they are doing it. In the meantime, what about Pittsburgh, Louisville? Uh, not much I can comment on there. I mean, I saw Louisville last weekend, and they didn't impress me at all. So, not surprising that they lost to Pitt in that game there. And as far as the actual big first upset of the day we have the Kansas State Wildcats with lost to Arkansas State by the way coming in to Norman Oklahoma and upsetting the number three team in the country 38-35 um, Mr. Vaughn boy you did a good job you, you, you may be short you may be small you may be a small back only about 5 foot 5 boy you did a good job Good-ass job. Scott Thompson threw for 300 yards. And you know what? You know what? Spencer Rattler, he he, he, did, he did good. I mean, what can I say? I mean, he's a quarterback for one of the blue bloods of college football. Of course, he's going to do great aside from three terrible, terrible interceptions. Yeah, you, you thought I was going to forget about those. I was not. Three terrible interceptions. Kansas State couldn't capitalize off of any of those turnovers, really. They really couldn't do anything with them. And then Oklahoma just becomes anemic 
it's the same old, same old stuff that's been plaguing this team since, you know, the playoff era began, really. The same old stuff. Defense allowing beat bombs, allowing huge runs up the gut, having Kansas State convert on fourth downs and long third downs and whatnot. It's disgusting. And I hate this. I mean, I don't, I don't want to be, you know, that guy, but Oklahoma may already be out, you know. Unless something happens, because, I mean, it's already a weird season anyway, you know. This is a devastating loss for the Sooners, at the very least. We can say that. I don't know about playoffs yet. It's a little bit too early to talk about playoffs. But this game... And, you know, for the Big 12 and whatnot, for the Big 12 race, um, that's not a good sign right there if you've already lost your first game in this conference. Not a good sign. So what about my Texas Longhorns? What did we do? Oh, well, I don't know. We came back from a 56-41 to 41 deficit, which should not have happened in the first place. We were, we had, you know, the 425 implemented this year by Chris Ash. Um, I'm pretty sure y'all know who that is. Uh, but 425 defense supposed to get us a little bit better on the defensive side of the ball because, as you know, like Oklahoma, Texas's defense is garbage. And it doesn't really matter about the other teams because those other teams are honestly, mostly, you know, sometimes completely irrelevant. Like Baylor will have some good years, TCU will have some good years. I mean, come on. West Virginia has had some good years. But the class of the conference. These two teams, Texas and Oklahoma, do not have a defense to speak of. And, you know, if, if the Longhorns get to the playoffs this year somehow, miraculously, and defense just ain't there, it's going to be the same result as Oklahoma. Getting blown out in the playoffs by, her, by a team that can play defense and play offense and just play efficiently on both sides of the ball. Ellie Gurr is a god, man. Um, let me tell you, he is great. He is fantastic. What a fantastic quarterback he is. Loving this new system um, that we've implemented this year, you know. Gone or, you know, the terrible plays that have been called and they've been replaced with much better plays. You know, we take more deep shots down the field. We get players wide open, you know, you know, with the zone and stuff. And I got to tell you, receivers and stuff are starting to emerge. We have a three-headed monster in the backfield. But all of that was damn near not enough to stop Texas Tech. All of that was damn near not enough at all. Whew. I am not prepared for our game next week. Not prepared at all. Speaking of the game, Mike Leach, JJ Costello, Mississippi State Bulldogs. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? How y'all feeling tonight? I know, I know Bulldog Nation is feeling good after upsetting the LSU Tigers, the defending national champions, baby. Miles Brennan and Ed O'Geron and company and all those guys that LSU lost really, really set in, you know. How do you let K.J. Costello, of all people, throw for 600 yards and five touchdowns? How do you let this happen? It's the same 10 plays at a and sure, you know, Leach will attack you with, with like 20 different formations. He'll attack you with um, a, a split slot look, you know, from the shotgun with two backs to the backfield, three wide receivers. He'll, he'll go with a four wide set. He'll go with a five wide set. He'll sometimes go with the with the, with the the um, three wide receivers, one tight end, and a halfback. Because, I mean, the air raid can be varied all across multiple formations. Very few plays, many formations. As we all know. Like, how, come on. You can stop a bubble screen. You, you, if you get in that zone and stuff like that, and you can't stop a Y cross or a stick or something like that, you know, you're you're doomed. Getting man, can't stop a, you know, 
a mesh, shallow cross, you know, you're doomed. And, I mean, some of these players are easier to defend than others, but, I mean, come on. LSU's defense just didn't have enough of the tank. Did not have enough of the tank at all. Could not stop them. Could not stop the Bulldogs. Wouldn't matter. That's a big loss for LSU. Big, big loss for a team coming off a national championship. And speaking of teams that have, you know, won national championships in the past, baby, Alabama, Alabama. I know Nick Saban's trotting out somebody new at quarterback. I forgot who it was anyway. I think it was Mac Jones. But anyway, they took care of Missouri, so who cares? It's Missouri. Like, they haven't been relevant in years. Um, but, yeah, really setting up that, that big clash already in November. You know, how will LSU respond? And will Alabama continue their dominance of the SEC, at least in the West anyway? That, that's what I'm thinking right now, and maybe Auburn will have something to say about it. Maybe Mississippi State will have something to say about it. We got a 10-game season for the SEC, all conference games, remember. Um, so, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see how all of that plays out, you know. Um, Oklahoma State, you know, they did what they needed to do, and – Georgia struggled for a very long time against Arkansas. You know, they were down 7-2 to two and then 7-5 to five at one point. So, um, yeah, Georgia's got some work to do. I mean, sure, they beat Arkansas by 27, but they, they got some work to do. And I know they're just trotting out a new quarterback as well. What about those Texas A&M Aggies, those dreaded Aggies? Um, they also struggled against Vanderbilt struggled mightily. Um, they only won by five. I didn't see the game because I, I, after, you know, the Texas game, it went off. I had just turned off the TV by this point, and we were gearing we were gearing up for Saturday night and the big Saturday night game. Before I talk about it, um, Cincinnati stopped the triple option. Wow, what a shock. They stopped the flex burn. They stopped it. Um, I will have to look at, I know there's a guy that does videos on, you know, teams running the flex bone and stuff like that because it's always a beauty to watch. Um, so I'll have to see how in the world Cincinnati kept Army, you know, stuffed and stuff like that. Um, yeah, the big more key game that was supposed to be set up for, you know, this week was Miami, Florida State. Now, Miami... They're getting a little cocky out there because they are 2-0. They beat Louisville. They beat a young, you know, upstart UAB team. And they just mollywop Florida State. Come on now. Blackman needs to get benched, probably. He probably needs to get benched. I'm pretty sure Deer King Company went off. I don't know because I didn't watch this game at all. I was disgusted at the fact that this was going to be the Saturday night game on ABC. I was disgusted because I knew this was going to be, I knew this was going to happen. Like, Florida State is just not good right now. They're not. They're in, they're in a rebuilding phase where they have to, you know, get the talent back. And it's just like, like, what, what am I supposed to say to that? Like, they got destroyed by, by Miami. Absolutely destroyed. If Miami... You know, things could get a little bit more interesting, you know, down the line. Because I don't know I don't know what Miami's schedule looks like. But they do know they play Clemson, at the very least. Um, and things could get interesting, even more interesting in the ACC now. You got North Carolina, of course. And Notre Dame's in for only this year. But they've struggled a little bit. Of course, you got Clemson. So, could Miami be that fourth team to try, you know, mix things up? Because it's been Clemson dominance for the past five or six years now. And the same thing happening over and over and over again. Um, and then lastly, um, Virginia Tech, they finally played a game. They, I know, right? 
surprising, right? They finally played a game. So did Virginia. I forgot who they play it, but they finally played. No, wait, Virginia played Duke, um, if I'm not mistaken. But Virginia Tech finally played a game, blew out NC State. And Tennessee, you know, there was a blunder of the game, um, I believe. Somebody had messed up and, you know, muffed the punt. You know, I believe it was a kicker that muffed the punt and, and tried to, you know, just save the play. But in, but that game was pretty close. Tennessee wins the game against South Carolina. I mean, South Carolina, they really haven't been relevant at all. It's not much to talk about there. But, yeah, what we learned this week, what did we learn? Well, we learned that Oklahoma is um, they, the, the same stuff. It's been the same stuff over and over again. Oklahoma and Texas, to be exact. The same stuff over and over again. What can LSU do now? How can they bounce back? Is their defense, you know, suspect now that players have been opting out or injured or have COVID or something along those lines? And... How's that air raid taste at CC? How's it taste? It tastes good, don't it? And then, you know, what can the ACC do now? You know, you know, you know what can the ACC do about Clemson anyway? Who's going to step up and challenge the Tigers? Because there's going to be some big games next week. I can tear. I can guarantee you that. There's going to be some big ones. And it all starts on a beautiful, beautiful Saturday afternoon in October. October finally begins. And I'm so excited. I'm, I'm ready. Very much ready for October, baby. Very much ready. So, that all being said, everybody, I'll see you guys tomorrow morning to talk about, you know, week number five of the college football season. The preview for week five is coming out tomorrow. So, y'all stay Right here, stay connected, get your mind ready for more college football talk. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'll take care, have a good night.